Hello, this is Brian. Today is Thursday, March 31st, 2022. I'm in Peter F. Skabarm Regional Park, right near the Powder Canyon area. And I want to provide a spotlight on shrubs video. And today's spotlight is on the California sagebrush, also known as the coastal sagebrush. And it's this plant here, Artemisia californica. Now, I believe I did a multiple spotlight video on a few related plants. And I believe I did include the California sagebrush in it. I think it was Palmer sagewort, California sagebrush, and western ragweed. I might have done a video on all three of those back in 2019, I think. I did a video on all three. But today I just want to do a specific spotlight just on the California sagebrush. Because this is a very important plant in our coastal sage grub community where I am standing right now in a, in a very, very, very abundant stand of California sagebrush. So again, the, the uh, botanical name is Artemisia californica. So if you know about the Great Basin sagebrush, Artemisia tridentata, now you know that this is a relative of that plant and a relatively close relative, being in the same genus. However, where this one grows is in a much different environment than Artemisia tridentata grows. And, but sometimes uh, the arrangement of the shrubs is very reminiscent of Great Basin sagebrush territory very uh, relatively dry areas and lots and lots of the sagebrush plant growing so it does look a lot like your sagebrush steppe and sagebrush prairie at times but I'll go more into its climactic uh, implications soon enough so Artemisia californica is a small to medium sized at least semi-drought deciduous shrub in the sunflower family, the Asteraceae. So, it's in the sunflower family. So, the name sagebrush does not implicate a true relationship with sages. Sages, like this right here, which is white sage, is not a relative of sagebrush. Sage is in the mint family, the Lamiaceae. This is in the Asteraceae, the sunflower family. So, the relationship of the two is not by DNA, but is by similar convergent evolution. Really strong essential oils and very strong odors that make the plants relatively unpalatable to a lot of herbivorous animals. So it's a, it's not an example it's an example of convergent evolution because these plants have developed very strong resinous oils in their tissues to make them smell very strongly and to try to prevent animals from chewing and eating them up. So, it's an example of convergent evolution with a lot of other plants that are found in these relatively arid environments. So, California sagebrush itself is typified by either a sprawling or upright stance. Uh, as you can see, a lot of these are somewhat upright, but they do. a lot of them also have a little lean to them kind of bent over a little bit so their stature is not always the same but generally there is a bit of an upright component and they're often somewhat low growing usually a little bit lower growing than Artemisia tridentata but they can occasionally get a little bit over your head so they have six six feet is not out of the question for a, for a California sagebrush so the leaves on our California sagebrush are a little bit similar to Artemisia tridentata. And what I mean by similar, 
they're not exactly the same shaped. So what you're going to see here is generally, like on Artemisia tridentata, see that kind of like pitchfork shaped leaf? It's got three lobes, as you can see here. It's got three lobes. And Artemisia tridentata has three shallow lobes, but the leaves on Artemisia tridentata are generally quite a bit broader. These ones are very thin, almost needly, but like I said, they have often have three lobes on them, but that's not always the case. Sometimes they have many more lobes on them, and what that what that uh, what that deals with is their response to the moisture in the climate. A lot of plants that live in foggier, wetter areas might have many, many more than three lobes. Uh, so that means more areas for uh, fog to condense on the leaflets and drop into the soil, watering the roots. And sometimes uh, the plant will have two lobes. Sometimes it'll have, like this one here, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six. This one's got about six lobes on it. So it's not always three lobed. It often is, and especially towards the drier part of the year, when the leaves are a lot drier and uh, not as prevalent, then you'll be more likely to see them more three lobed. But during the moisture time of the year, a lot of times they'll have many more than three lobes. And one thing about California sagebrush is this is a little bit of a biased opinion on my part, I will admit, but I'm just going to be honest. In my opinion, this is one of the finest smelling plants I have ever, ever come across in my life. The fragrance is absolutely intoxicating. And most people will agree, most people will agree it is a pleasant fragrance. And right now where I'm standing, even without brushing up against it or anything, you can smell it, especially when the air is moist. You come here to a, sage, a sagebrush stand after a rainfall or a fog drip, it is, it's, it's just an incredible smell and is very prevalent in the air. See, the, the smell of this plant kind of has a sweetness and a pungency together. Kind of a sweet, tangy aroma. And it's a little bit different, it's a little bit sweeter, I'd say a little bit sweeter than, than Artemisia tridentata, the Great Basin sagebrush. So it's a little sweeter, but it still has a nice tang and a kind of nice zang to it. It's just a very pleasant smelling plant. And, and I was mentioning that they are often drought, they also d d display some drought deciduousness. And what I mean by drought deciduousness, they might shed some to quite a few of their leaves during the drier part of the year, which where it grows is in the summer dry season. So sometimes these plants will look pretty sparse. They might still have some, some foliage on them, but the foliage will not be very lush. And you'll have to kind of rub it harder to smell it. But even though it's still on warm, sunny days, warm, sunny days, you'll still smell it, though. But to get that really nice kick, uh, when you rub a leaf, you have to rub it a little bit harder when the tissues are drier on the plant during the summer. But right now, all you have to do is just barely, just very gently stroke your finger on the foliage and the stems of this plant to get a really zangy smell. So... So it does ex exhibit some drought deciduousness and some slight drought dormancy. So active growth will cease probably within about a month or so. And there might still be some, some green foliage left on it, but it's not going to be actively growing. Its buds will be dormant awaiting the next season's rainfall. And that's common here in the coastal sage grub. The coastal sage grub is the predominant habitat where you're going to find Artemisia californica. This is a perfect example of coastal sage grub. In some places like this, California sagebrush might be the dominant plant. And in this area, it's the dominant subshrub. Uh, I would say Artemisia californica is rocks the line between subshrub and shrub. Closer to shrub because it is, it does have a woody base to it. Um, the the higher, the higher portion, higher portion of it is much less woody and a little more herbaceous, but they do have quite woody stems. So as you see here, it's very, it's kind of succulent right now because it's, you know, 
it's still you know it's still kind of moist from the rains that we've received so it still has some succulence to it not like a not like a, a cactus or anything I'm just saying it's got a little lushness to it but as you move down the stem the stems get a little harder they're still quite brittle the twigs this is an old dead twig and they and these plants can be quite brittle especially in the higher tissues but you notice as you start moving down the stem we start getting a little woodier as we get more into the lower branches the plant starts forming more wood not very hard wood we're not talking about wood as hard as like a birch leaf mountain mahogany or a toyon or whatever but it does develop some woodiness as you go down Artemisia tridentata very similar in that aspect it's uh, a little more it's a little le it's less woody on the top and much woodier on the bottom and like Great Basin sagebrush you get some pretty gnarly trunks and stems on them with shreddy grayish brown furrowed bark so you can see here you can see the very gnarled lower trunks where it's a lot woodier they might be capable of some slight resprouting after uh, fire and disturbance um, but it's not like on chaparral shrubs where they have a huge root burl to sprout from but sometimes sometimes the the trunks the woody trunks on these plants can get quite large sometimes I would say great basin sagebrush tends to have larger trunks on them but these ones can get some very noticeable curly trunks that kind of twist and contort and curve and are quite actually quite attractive especially when they get older they start getting more contorted and twisted and those are the ones that sometimes get over your head like right, California sagebrush now we're going to talk about uh, its its habitat so I did mention it grows in coastal sage scrub that's its predominant uh, predominant habitat and places like this uh, it might be the dominant shrub but in a lot of areas it will co-mingle with sage the true sages it'll co-mingle with laurel sumac these bushes here Malusma lorena toyon sometimes uh, even some some chaparral shrubs that might mix in like the sumacs and stuff like that uh, lemonade berry mix in with that and other plants like monkey flower uh, and, and lots of other uh, lots of other small uh, coastal sage scrub plants and that's when you have more of a variety in your coastal sage scrub so you'll have some areas where it's predominantly California sagebrush you might have areas where it's mixed with sagebrush monkey flower deer weed uh, lots of herbaceous plants in the in the op more open spots then you get some woodier shrubs like corn like the sumacs toyons occasionally sermis but so it also can be found in disturbed areas areas that have uh, been mechanically disturbed uh, like, like uh, dug up for uh, roads and stuff like that so sometimes on the side of roads and trails you'll see this plant growing mightily and proudly along those areas so they do come up in disturbance and their seeds are quite viable I have had the experience of germinating these before quite easily I may add it usually takes a couple days to maybe a week or two and then a lot of times you're gonna get a pretty good germination percentage on Artemisia California it's been a while since I've grown it because I keep missing it when it's in seed but it does it can make quite a great garden plant it really can and it will it will definitely add character and fragrance to wherever you decide to grow it but now, now sagebrush is generally very well adapted to very dry summers and sometimes like to seven months a year of not a drop of rain sometimes a little extra water during the summer will keep it relatively plush just don't overwater it like any coastal sage scrub plant don't overwater it in the summer but if you want to keep it relatively lush you can add a little bit I've grown it under nursery conditions before and it did pretty well for quite a long time so, 
So now the elevational range of, co of uh, California or coastal sagebrush. It's a low elevation plant. It's not nearly as cold tolerant as Artemisia tridentata, the Great Basin sagebrush. I've seen it above 3,000 feet before in the Santa Ana Mountains and uh, some of the other mountain ranges here in Southern California. But uh, I've seen it above 3,500 feet. So there might be some spots, especially on warmer south facing slopes, where you might be able to find it up to about 4,000 feet. But I don't know if you're going to find it much, if at all, above that. If anybody finds a plant above that elevation, uh, drop a comment. I'd be really interested to find out because uh, part of my curiosity is uh, checking out stuff that grows higher up than where you would expect it or in areas where you wouldn't expect to see it. But yeah, generally below 4,000 feet, usually significantly so. And when it's up that high, it's almost going to be, almost always going to be on a south facing slope where it's warmer. So the flowers, the flowers and the seeds on the California sagebrush, kind of like uh, Artemisia tridentata, come on these uh, extended uh, inflorescences like these on the ends of these branches eventually towards fall fall and early winter they will elongate and they'll produce these uh, kind of greenish colored flowers here are what the flower buds look like right here these are what the flower buds on Artemisia californica look like quite similar to Artemisia tridentata so you see here so the inflorescence stalk will develop during the course of the year, usually towards fall and sometimes early winter is when these plants will be in full bloom and then shortly thereafter their seeds are these little tiny little specks that if you tap the tap the ripened uh, the ripened uh, inflorescences you'll get you'll get them falling on your hand quite readily. So California sagebrush awesome plant part uh part of our california coastal sage grub uh now i did mention about the plants not being pal uh, often not being palatable to a lot of animals not all animals of course but i believe that some people have used it for seasoning i believe you can use it for seasoning i would do more research uh, i'd do more research on that end before just assuming and picking a plant and put it in your your sauce or whatever but these plants uh, I believe have been used as seasoning and another thing they, these plants have also been called cowboy cologne and I believe uh, the coastal sagebrush and the basin sagebrush probably have uh, both been called that I believe because uh, when the when cowboys come rolling into town they're kind of, they're, you know, they've been on their horses. They're sweaty and dirty, and kind of smelly. So what they do is they rub, rub all, o rub the branches of the plant all over them to make them smell better. So another nickname for this plant, and I believe the Great Basin one is called Cowboy Cologne. So once again, California sagebrush, beautiful grayish green, beautiful shrub in the sunflower family, the Asteraceae. One of the most incredible smelling plants, in my opinion, and a lot of other people tend to agree. And growing here in the beautiful coastal sage scrub of Skabar Park, right in Roland Heights, Hacienda Heights. This was a spotlight on shrubs video with Brian. I know this is a little bit longer than a lot of my videos, but just have a lot of love for this plant. And I hope uh, this video imparts that love onto you the viewer to appreciate and enjoy this plant come check it out in the coastal sage scrub thanks for watching this was brian spotlight on shrubs artemisia californica california sagebrush and i'll see you on the next episode of spotlight